I'm going to explain to you what I do to prevent Amazon FBA returns fraud. My name is Manny and this is Manny's Book Bag. What is going on everybody? My name is Manny and I am back with another video. This question comes up quite often in the Facebook groups and uh, it has to do with how we prevent our items from being switched out, how we prevent someone from returning an item uh, fraudulently, uh, sometimes switching it out on us, uh, sometimes we get our book back after we uh, recall it and it's not even our book, it's somebody else's book, whether the customer switched it out, whether Amazon switched it out and co-mingled it when they weren't supposed to. The basic question is, how do we protect ourselves from Amazon FBA returns fraud and other shenanigans? That's terrible. Now this video is gonna be short and sweet because my answer is short and sweet. There are suggestions out there such as uh, taking photographs of all of your books, uh, putting marks on the books, uh, putting a particular sticker or some sort of a stamp pad uh, design on the inside cover of the book. Uh, I've even seen some suggestions where you can use a stamper uh, with a, uh, a mark that can only be seen under black light. Yeah, your ears work perfectly. You just heard that. Now this instinct is a good one. It's all in the interest of protecting our accounts and making sure that we're getting back the right merchandise. Want to know what I do to protect myself? Absolutely nothing. Forget about it. I have learned through years of experience that the best way for me to minimize the damage of one return to my revenue and to my account is to have more transactions. Yes, the simple answer is that the best thing that you can do to protect yourself from returns fraud is to sell more books. It is very easy to become reactionary over one transaction, especially if we feel that we have somehow been stolen from or been cheated out of something. It comes up even more frequently during textbook rush when we're selling books for $100 and up and they're extremely valuable. But ultimately, selling more books and just moving on is not only the best thing for your account, the best thing to cushion and protect your account, but also the best thing for you up here. It keeps you in the correct business mindset and it prevents you from making decisions about your workflow that don't make business sense. It's actually pretty simple. Let's look at the numbers. Let's say for argument's sake that you sell about a thousand units per month. And along with those thousand units, you have a return rate of about 1%. That means that your total returns for that month is 10 transactions. Now out of those 10 transactions, seven or eight of them are gonna be 100% legitimate. Some may be mistakes that you made, some may be honest returns. The fact is that working with Amazon, someone can return something at any time within the return window for any reason and it's perfectly okay on the platform. So ultimately, over the course of a thousand transactions, you're talking about one, maybe two transactions that are be kind of iffy, they'll be a little sketchy, someone's trying to pull something over on you. As far as I'm concerned, they can have it. There is absolutely no way that I'm going to change the way that I do business. I'm not going to add steps to my workflow because my workflow is based on speed and getting things shipped, getting things out the door. I am not going to add time to my workflow by snapping pictures, stamping books, using a different size label that I normally would use, uh, putting, I mean, I'm not, I'm just not going to do anything to add time to that workflow over one transaction or two transactions when people can still return stuff on you if they want to, they're still gonna be able to do it. It's, it's questionable whether Amazon's even gonna listen to you, so is it really worth it? But instead, if you just focus on getting the materials back so that you can verify them and make sure that it's the right thing, and if it's not the right thing, at least it's not in your inventory, and you focus on getting more stuff out the door, you focus on increasing your sell-through rate, you focus on increasing your monthly shipping volume, and you just focus on generating more business, not only will you be happier, but your business will be in a better place. As a business owner, one of the things that you need to fight is that urge to get caught up in the small stuff. 
And this is really small stuff. You're talking about a $50 transaction or $100 worth of transactions over the course of a thousand sales, which could be twelve, fifteen thousand dollars per month. Uh, that's not where your time should be spent. And that is my message to you. Don't get caught up in the small stuff. And people returning stuff on you, that's small stuff. People are entitled to do that. This is e-tail. It's what it is. Instead, focus on the returns that you can actually learn something from. Focus on the ones where there was some sort of a lapse. If you overlooked something or you made some kind of mistake, if you have employees and they didn't pay special attention to something, look for those teachable moments and learn from them. The rest of them, forget about it. But here's the question of the day. What is your current return rate? Have you actually encountered returns fraud? And what do you do about it? Go ahead and put in your comments down below because I'm sure some of you are doing some really creative stuff. Well, that's all for today's video, folks. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see me make more videos like this one, please remember to share, like, and subscribe to support the channel. If you haven't already liked this video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, tap on that book bag right there. And while you're in there, hit that bell so that those bell notifications let you know when new videos drop. Until next time, let's go make some money.